The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this second Sunday after Pentecost. We refer to this as the ordinary time or the green season. As I said last week, the first half of the church year focuses on the life of Christ. And then once he's ascended and we celebrate that in the church and the giving of the spirit, the second half of the year focuses on now what does it mean for the church? And so we think about how we live our lives uh, in this in-between time. It's also a wonderful time during the summer to uh, sing a new song to the Lord. And so uh, we're going to be using through the summer an Irish liturgy that I'm familiar with. Um, It's not like applauding uh, German Luther hymn. It's a very light uh, melody, and so uh, not unlike an Irish dancer. You want to be light on your feet while you're uh, singing this liturgy. Thanks to the choir for being willing to lead this and introduce it for a couple of weeks. Um, We thought it might be nice for you to just listen today so you kind of get that in the muscle memory of your mind, the tune, and then they'll sing again next week and you can kind of ease into that. But hopefully it it doesn't create anxiety about it. It's it's an easy tune to learn and to sing, and I think it's one of those uh, settings that you'll find yourself humming the tune at at work or at home during the week uh, once you learn it. Uh, You will need to take note, there are some parts that are not sung uh, that we do sing throughout the rest of the year, so um, the one thing about a new setting, you have to pay attention. So take note of of the different parts of the service and where things may be different. Uh, Both of our nursery attendants canceled out this morning, so while the nursery is open, there are no nursery attendants today, but if we have little ones that uh, need a little time out, parents are welcome to take them there. At 9.45 today, we will gather outside weather permitting to dedicate the two new sections of our columbarium. It's probably a 15 minute, 20 minute dedication, right? Um, If it's raining, I've got my big pastoral umbrella and uh, you can stand at the door or uh, uh, we can open the windows in the other areas, but that will be at 945. For any and all men of the church who may not sing normally in the choir, but would consider doing so this summer, uh, at 1015 today, there will be a men's chorus practice. They'll be singing on uh, Father's Day, so uh, you don't need to have uh, signed up for that. Just be here. It is 1015, correct, Jeff? Yes, 1015 today. Uh, We are, as you've noticed, uh, introducing once again the use of lay assisting ministers. Uh, It's not a huge role, but it's an important role to emphasize that uh, leadership of worship is not just for clergy or deacon or deaconess. Uh, If you're interested in assisting and helping with that, um, see Fred and uh, we'll get you in the rotation. We'll certainly provide uh, instruction about that as well. It's not difficult, uh, but it also helps us now that we're doing two stations or rotations for communion. Um, You'll notice the air conditioning is not working, but the part arrived on Friday. And so we anticipate this week having the air conditioning fixed, and uh, that'll be a relief for all of us. Uh, With regard to Vacation Bible School, please sign up to help set up and tear down. There's a sign-up information at the Welcome Center. Also, if you have children, neighborhood children, grandkids, nieces and nephews uh, that you'd like to sign up for a Sunday school or for Vacation Bible School, uh, please do so. All the crews that are needed are coming together, so we're looking forward to Vacation Bible School. Also today, after the 11 o'clock service, there will be a Sunday school bash. Uh, High school class will be meeting at Graders for ice cream. Preschool through middle schoolers are having a water balloon fight here at the church and an ice cream Sunday bar. So just meet in the East Narthex. Today is the first Sunday of the month, and so we'll have an offering of first fruits that uh, just reminds us uh, that every week we are collecting items for WARM, the Westerville Area Resource Ministry, um, and also at the end of the service, we'll be blessing the care team kits and uh, members of our care team who take uh, the the Lord's Supper to uh, those who are sick and shut in. So that will happen today as well. Are there other announcements that should be made this morning that I've missed? I would like to say a word of thanks to Addie for singing today. Thanks so much. We love when you sing. It's a beautiful way to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. If you please stand and turn toward the font, we will prepare for worship. (laughs) 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not looked to you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, we plead the refuge of your infinite mercies, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives power to become children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all nations, you have revealed your will to your people and promised your help to us all. Help us to hear and to do what you command, that the darkness may be overcome by the power of your light through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to the Israelites, Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is in your gates, that your male servant and your female servants may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the merry harp and the the full moon, the day of our feast. This is a statute for Israel, the law of the God of Jacob. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard an unfamiliar voice say, I eased his shoulder from the burden, his hands were set free from the bearing the saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you. O oh, Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you, you shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out at the land of the Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Raise a loud shout. reading from 2 Corinthians. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God said, for God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies, for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
Gospel for the second Sunday of Pentecost is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the second and third chapters. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He and those who were with him. How he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with a withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out immediately and held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. While I know some of you are going to disagree with me this morning, it seems to me that not all change makes life better. For example, do smartphones really make life better? There were reports this week citing recent studies which show addiction to smartphones can be as bad as addiction to other addictive substances, especially when it comes to children. While many of us are totally dependent upon our smartphones and there is a certain convenience to having them, do they make life better? And then, maybe this is more controversial. Has it worked out better for society as a whole when young people marry for physical attraction and romance rather than entering into marriages arranged by their parents or their families or their tribes? I have good friends, Pastor Bassam Abdullah and his wife Katie, who were born and raised in the old city of Jerusalem and really didn't know each other when their parents arranged their marriage decades ago. And intrigued to actually meet someone who married by parental decree, I've spoken with both of them about the experience and whether they would have preferred to find their own spouses. And their response was, How's that working out today? How's it working out this new way of marrying for love and romance when significantly more than half of marriages end in divorce? And I'm not, I'm not suggesting a change, and neither our son or our daughter asked for my assistance choosing a wife or a husband, although I offered does make one wonder, is this way better? And finally, has life 
been better since the so-called blue laws, which kept businesses closed on Sunday, were struck down, and other than Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A, most stores and businesses are now open on Sunday so that people are shopping and working seven days a week around the clock. Has that made life better for workers, for shoppers? Has it made life better for families and communities and the practice of our faith. Today we get a heavy dose of the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, which we hear commanded by the Lord our God as a requirement, not only for me and my family, but for you and your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates, <clears throat> that your, so that your male servant and your female servant, if you have them, may rest as well as you. And this was a commandment set down by the Lord God who sent it down through Moses. Recognizing that in the same way that the Lord God created the heavens and the earth in six days and designated the seventh as a day of rest, he intends for his covenant people to have a day of rest as well. He intends for his covenant people to have a day of rest. And in our first lesson from Deuteronomy, the Israelites are reminded that God freed his people from slavery in Egypt so that they wouldn't have to work seven days a week, so that they wouldn't have to slave away day after day for Pharaoh. And why is that? It's because in God's economy, in God's created order, it isn't good for people, all people, any people, to work seven days a week. As Paul says, we really are just earthen vessels. Sometimes we're fragile. Sometimes we're vulnerable. God didn't create us to work seven days a week. And God didn't create life and society that way. And really, I'm guessing anyone who has, has any sense about them and has lived life at all has come at some point to realize that, whether early or late. And yet it seems that we are powerless to control it or to discipline ourselves so that we have a balanced life, which at the least includes one day of rest out of seven. It seems once state governments ended the blue laws, our lives began to spin faster and faster, making busyness and full calendars and constant work the aim for life so that it's harder and harder to limit and discipline ourselves to keep that godly balance with time for ourselves and our families and our friends, but even more, to have time for God. Because that's the twofold intention of a Sabbath. One day out of seven that's set aside for rest and refreshment, but also that same day to be set aside for God. And many in our Western North American culture fall short on both. And we sometimes rationalize it based on the words of Jesus in our gospel lesson. Well, we say, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Which is certainly freeing when we're talking about providing food or healing or care for those in need. Jesus' point is that the third commandment isn't to be a legalistic chain around our necks, keeping us from acts of charity or love. 
As you may remember, the rabbis laid out 613 laws or commandments. And they laid out 39 categories of work which could not be performed on the Sabbath. Today, in some branches of Judaism, Sabbath laws prohibit turning lights on or off, as well as forbidding driving. To which Jesus issues not really a relaxation of the Sabbath laws, but he's explaining the Sabbath laws. He's reframing them to allow for acts of love and kindness for those in need, to free us to act even on the Sabbath when someone is hungry or in need of help or healing. The commandment to keep the Sabbath holy, says Jesus, is intended to provide help for humankind and respite and renewal, not unrealistic, irrational, burdensome rules and restrictions that make life more difficult. These words of Jesus are meant to set us free for the Sabbath. Free to have a day of rest and refreshment and worship. Even though in real life they've been used to put us back into slavery. Enslaved sometimes by our work and our busyness, and our schedule. We hear the Lord say, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, and we interpret that to mean, as with so many of the commandments, well, now I can do whatever I want on the Sabbath. Now the Sabbath commandment no longer applies for, the Sabbath was made for me after all which we sometimes seem to think that means, now I myself am Lord of the Sabbath. That's how many hear and interpret the words of Jesus in our gospel lesson today. The Sabbath was made for me, so I'm Lord of my own Sabbath. When in truth, Jesus says, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He is Lord of the Sabbath. Not you and not me. And we would do well in our lives to remember these two things. First, the Sabbath was made for man and woman so that we wouldn't be in bondage to our job and our calendar and our activities. And second, Jesus is Lord even of the Sabbath, so that whatever we do on the Sabbath, we are freed from other activities to give ourselves to Him, to make the Sabbath all about Him. Which I hope you hear this morning not as as legalism, not as just another burden laid upon you, Not as yet another pressure, not another stress-inducing weight that you have to carry as in, well, now, on top of everything else, I'm supposed to squeeze in the Sabbath. Rather, the Lord intends Sabbath-keeping to be be freeing and life-giving. The Lord intends a Sabbath-keeping to give us One day that's different. One day, as we said last week, that is time out of time. Time that is otherworldly. It's spiritual, like a breath of fresh air or like cold water on a hot day. Like a comfy chair after a hard day on the job. I once heard of a band called Taking Back Sunday. And I got all excited because I just assumed it was a Christian band, thinking, how great is this that this band is advocating, having as our aim and goal to take back Sunday from our secular culture? Till my daughter set me straight that it's just a rock band. 
with no particular spiritual message. But maybe it can still be a suggestion, a motto, a strategy for we who are sometimes tired and stressed and struggling with out-of-balance lives. Maybe, maybe taking back Sunday, taking back a Sabbath is a good idea, even if we start with taking back half of Sunday. God created the Sabbath and gives a Sabbath for us, for you and for me, and for time spent with the Lord to make all the other things we have to do in life not only bearable, but hopefully joyful. So whatever your day during the week turns out to be your Sabbath, may God fill it with balance and rest and refreshment and renewal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe, believe in, in God. God.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, thank you for inviting us to share your Sabbath rest, for healing, refreshment, and your own dear presence in your precious Son. By your Holy Spirit, give us grace to cherish the Sabbath and gladly draw nearer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make your church a place of rest and gladness, forgiveness and mission, fellowship and faithfulness. Use it to teach all people words of prayer, praise, and thankfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Adorn this congregation with the beauty of holiness and the glory of Jesus' amazing grace. Help us invite and lead many friends, neighbors, and family members to share a closer walk with Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give integrity, honor, wisdom, and prudence to our elected and appointed leaders in this country and throughout the world. Establish them, their thoughts, words, and actions in righteousness, justice, and truth. Remind them that they shall account for their stewardship of authority and power before you, the Lord of all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant release, refreshment, and healing to everyone held captive to suffering of body, mind, heart, or soul. Deliver them from whatever afflicts them. This day we remember before you Evelyn Bowden, Marge Zimmerman, Harper Jean Tucker, Grace Sima, and those we name silently in our hearts or out loud with our voices. Gina. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for the children and youth of our congregation and community, especially as we are preparing for Vacation Bible School. Provide us with faithful teachers, leaders, and volunteers and help us to reach great numbers of children who need more Jesus in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Sorrow free. 
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places <clears throat> offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This time I'd like to ask the members of our care team who are receiving home communion kits to please come forward for the blessing. Let us pray. Compassionate God, as Jesus called disciples to follow him, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick or homebound. May these gifts be signs of our love and prayers, that through the sharing of the body and blood of Christ, all may know your grace and healing, revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.